We have an unidentified flying object. I'm Jack Osborne, and you're listening. This is Hudson Harvey, and you're listening to... I'm Richard C. Hoagland, and you're listening to... I'm Art Bell, and you're listening to Dr. J Radio Live. We have an unidentified flying object. We have a, a very special guest today because he is an experiencer, uh, and, and he's going to talk about his experience in length for the very first time. He's called into other shows. You guys might have heard him, and this is why it's important. Disclosure is in your hands, everybody. Anybody who's listening or watching this, remember, it's your responsibility. If you have a story, if you've seen something, get it out there. Let me tell you a little bit about Chris. He's 43 years old, lives in... Oregon, and he's married with three children. Obviously, he was raised there as well, and he graduated Oregon City High School in 1990, so quite some time ago. I was in 97. Anyway, he is a UFO experience. As I said, his name is Chris Brown, and he is here with us today. Chris, welcome to the show. Hi, how you doing? It's good to be back. Yes, it's a, a pleasure to have you, and Thank actually, you. you know, the last time you were on, it was with that special edition we had with Adam. I hope everybody out there got a chance to see that, but today we're focusing on Chris's encounter. I want to take it back, and and I'm, for everybody out there, we've not, I haven't done this with Chris before, so keep that in mind that I want to do this as cold as possible. Chris, go ahead and tell me from... Go back to the time. When, what, what occurred and when did it start? That's what I want to know. When and where? Give us the setting. Well, this went back in, in, in the summer of uh, 2011, of August, just okay. right uh, going on. Uh, so fairly recently. Well, this, yeah, it's almost the before-year encounter here in uh, four days from the, from the 18th on August was uh, the first, first encounter. It was at, um, oh, I actually went and took a nap was uh, in the evening time. I didn't end up getting up until later on. It was probably... Oh, I would say uh, mm, 8.50 p.m. probably. When no, I, it was, this is at your house. At my house, right? yeah. And in, I, in Oregon, in, yep, in some, July, uh, August 14th, August, or August, August 18th, 18th, 2011, yeah. almost five years, four years ago. Four okay, years okay. Ago. So you just woke up from a nap. Yep, just woke up from a nap. And so what had happened was is, is, is I had went and uh, had to go out, do my nightly watering. And when I pulled out the hose, did my back... Uh, little garden thing and pull out the front go do the front part why well, i put a bunch of weed killer and stuff i did a bunch of yard work that day and i it was probably around nine o'clock straight up by the time i got to the front area and when i did i pulled my hose out into the road because i had to stretch out the kinks because it was really long and and uh when i got out I noticed some lights out and there it had fields all around me and i really didn't kind of i don't know i just didn't really take it in they looked kind of thought maybe they were the part of the neighborhood that's connected right to next to the side of the, uh, to the field there. And I just, I don't know. I just really didn't take it in. I kind of really wasn't, uh, it was, it was, it was, uh, it was one of those things where I was, uh, sitting lights were kind of, uh, the, the sun was, was, was going down at that time, but it was still kind of light. So it just wasn't anything that really just, just, just sat out in my mind. And so what had happened was, is I pulled back the hose. I didn't really think about it much, and watered my second half of my yard for probably about twenty minutes, you know. And it was so they just like, like I say it was at that point in time where the sun was going down fairly fast then. Uh -huh. And so when I had pulled it back out because I had to stretch it out again, and um, it was visibly, uh, uh, I could see in the, in the field there there was this huge glass dome. That uh, if I if I if, that's all I could just see with this was this huge glass dome like a bubble which is like behind the uh, trees I just whoa I was just such shock I grabbed the hose and I uh, just threw it just threw it out and in, um, in the uh, try to get try to make it in the yard and in, in my yard I don't know if I did but anyway and and gosh the town was so dead and I just was uh I, you know, I, they, I was just so, it's just, oh my gosh, you know, just kind of just sitting in there in shock, wondering if this was even happening. Nine o'clock is when I kind of seen it, but it wasn't until 920s when I, when I had discovered that I definitely 
was, you know, it was about that 920, I guess, when I'd seen the huge dome and it was darker. Yeah. Now, PM. okay. Now you you said dome. Yeah, and yeah. It was describe just, describe the rest like literally to a T, so everyone out there listening can was, paint a picture of it. Oh, it was it was like a few. It was like the Jetsons. That's really what you do is you think of like the Jetsons when they have all their little little dome things on top of their little space vehicles. So so, so and, would you would you compare it to the sports model from? Yeah. The, well, no, something. no, because he never showed really the glass dome. This was very okay. Diamond so the, looking. There was. Okay, okay, so that's what I'm asking. So was there glass? I'm, I'm trying to picture this right now. So are you? was it like a flying saucer where it had a glass, like a dome with glass around it, or you're talking about just a dome? Just, like, it, it was the it was the, a, a disc with like a glass diamond-looking dome that was on top of it. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Now, did you see anything in there? I didn't. I didn't see anything in there, and I couldn't see... Uh, any light or anything that was illuminating out from that area. Um, really, it was just all I could just see was just very, it was very transparent. Um, now, this time of year, is it's it's dark at the, the time, and they were actually recording fairly close as we speak to the time this actually happened. You said it was 8.50 p.m. It's almost that time uh, as we speak. So you're saying that literally it, it was dark, and, and you're, you're seeing this in, in your... Well, in your backyard, essentially. Yeah, basically, I was living. The town that I was living in was a was just a small town. I recently moved, but it was a small town, population of twenty eight hundred people. This is in Sublimity, Oregon, which is about fifteen miles outside of Salem, the capital, about fifty five miles outside of Portland, and so it was just a nothing of a town. It was just a basically a neighborhoods, two two neighborhoods. Right across the street from each other, surrounded by nothing but 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 all fields, and um, so there was another town that's connected to it, but it uh, it's Staten, you know, and it's got stores and and stuff like this. But the, it's, I guess, probably maybe about I don't know, ten thousand people. It's a bit quite bigger, quite a bit bigger, but it's not real big still. But uh, the town that I was is very small, so it was just had fields all around us. And, and, um, but when I, that, that, that's all I seen was like I said, and, but I could see the lights kind of underneath the glass dome kind of going around. I could see that it was obviously it was, it was some type of disc. It was whatever. I could see like blue and red lights kind of going counterclockwise from each other. Like they were like blinking kind of seemed and, um, through the trees and I really didn't get the whole size <laughs> the first the the size of the huge glass dome for one thing let's put that in perspective because by putting that in perspective and really at, at that point in time that's the biggest glass dome to ever be constructed uh if we went here on earth and we tried to construct a glass dome of anything like that or uh it would be it'd be in the world record book and by far and so um that was amazing in itself so anyway but uh anyway so kind of kind of getting off pattern here off off topic of of, of 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 the encounter so anyway so here i see this thing sitting in the middle i'm just whoa and uh so i grabbed my hose and i threw it and the exact, it. It, it just i don't know if it landed in the yard i don't i don't know or, or what but anyway and no, the, no, no i'm saying was your intention to throw it at at wait, no i had my hose just because it was about a mile from me the okay the 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 uh uh, the disc it was out way out probably I, i'd say a good maybe mile maybe a little bit over in the farmer's field so yeah it wasn't anything i could throw it at but no i was just because i had my hose in my hand and when i was out in the street and i could only see that uh field when i got out in the street to stretch out my hose to get the kinks out because when i pulled my hose back into my yard then i have big um, hedges that were right there that separated my yard and the neighbor's yard and all that i couldn't see out in that field until I got back out there. So anyway, um, so here it is. I'm just, I'm just in such like, whoa. So I ran over to, started to run over to the neighbor's house. Um, on, uh, I stopped because uh, <laughs> I didn't really know them real well. Um, but they were the only ones that had a house full of people. I knew they were all up. They had both their boys there and they were younger, you know, in their, in their teens and early twenties. And, you know, and, 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 um, 
they had a house full of people and stuff. And I just didn't know them real well enough at that time. And so here I go up there. I got probably about, mm, I'd say maybe, well, I forgot I was right in their doorway mixed with because they had a motion uh, light that, that popped on. And then I stopped. And I said, they aren't going to believe me. They're going to think I'm crazy. Here they have a, a group full of people. And I'm going to go banging on that door. Oh, you got to get out here. You got to see. She's going to look at me like, 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 you know, so I stopped and uh -huh. I just went back to the road and there was just still sitting there. And then that is when, that's when I just for a quick second, it like it pulsated or felt like, um, like if I was going down a roller coaster really super fast and I had that, that, that feeling of the belly, you know, you get the wheelie, the willies in your belly. And then the um, kind of a warm feeling kind of in, in my, you know, just lower loins. And then things kind of look purplish and, and bluish for her color. Like, and then like, it, it's just, it, my, my things were really blurry. Like uh, they look all blurry at the same time. Like if I, you know, if I was grabbing on something that was shaking really super hard and was, and that was vibrating and that was like, was, it was all like all those feelings all in one. And it was really a scary. And I was, Oh God, because I almost felt myself feeling like if I would have just not said anything that I did, it sucked me up into the darn thing, you know, <laughs> so the feelings that they just, I never felt, I never felt those feelings before. And it really was scary. Like I said, it made me feel like I was, um, like if I, if, <laughs> if I hadn't gone, Oh God, and hadn't gotten scared and just would have went with it. Or I don't know. Um, that I that I would have I would have been aboard the craft. Maybe I was. I don't know. All I know is that um, it stopped right when I went. Oh God! In my head, and I and and I didn't sit there and be caught up and oh oh my God! How did I just feel? Because here it is, still sitting there in front of me. It's still all happening. So then that is when I remember. Oh, I got my iPod. So I went and I and I tried to run down to get as close closer to it, which um, the light. Uh, street light right above my house there right above my driveway it was always burned out right on that neighborhood and they never went in there and fixed it every now and then it would pop on on a weird thing but then it just never went out went on but uh anyway um i ran down about 50 yards or 50 feet or whatever down to the stop sign where there was two lights and and all that there to hope to try to get a better uh light and try to record it right so uh -huh. so i run down there and trying to get this thing figured out, first I had just got my, well, I'd had the iPod for a while, but I really didn't know the settings to go to, right, just bam, bam, bam. And everything was still kind of, okay, where do I go thing? And so, uh, and I was shaking so hard, and I was, oh, I was, I was, I was trying just not to shake. And so I ended up going and, and gosh, I actually put the thing on the, can on the ground on the concrete, with the lights, trying to go through the thing, hold my one hand with my other hand to get it in a place. Once I did try to find this, it just thought I could find the right setting, and I didn't. And uh, it was, oh, finally I just gave up and um, practically missed the whole entire sighting almost on that big thing. But nevertheless, it was still there. So then I uh, went, and when I stopped and I looked up and I noticed it, uh, well, it looked like it, it, it probably on my judge it floated back and forth let's say 30 feet mm, and then on the third time it went east toward the mountain and then that is when i mean it was so big already the glass dome i mean that was big i mean it took up one of the whole outline of trees you see on the open minds report and the mufon and all that but when it kept going when it floated away i mean it just kept going and going and going the the whole sides of it that is when I could just see that 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 was the most breathtaking thing there is the size of it because that's a major field that's a huge field I mean there's that neighborhood but then behind them, that neighborhood that's not that's not real big but then behind the neighborhood's just the big field and that field goes for miles now I've never been back behind those trees to know that there was the I didn't even know there was a valley there because you can't see it but um I guess that would make sense, yeah. But and and it goes for a long way, so you could get something really big in there. And if I had to put a judge size of judgment on it, 
I could only put aircraft carrier to luxury cruise liner. And to me, it seemed bigger. I, I, I see if like a mile size, it seemed as crazy as it is. So it didn't feel man-made at all. The size of it, the, 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 the huge glass uh, diamond uh, dome. Yeah, obviously, it wasn't exotic military, so it wasn't an alien reproduction vehicle either is what I'm saying, right? You, you clearly think this was something out of this world, literally. Yeah, I do. I do. Right. I truly do that. I believe that. And, and but then, then, you know, that's just me and who knows. But anyway, all I can say is that uh, that that uh, that thing is huge and is nothing. We have that that in our arsenal or what we put together, you know, the, to to compare to that size of a, of a structure. Now, as far as let's go to the to the, what I'm calling the glass or the diamond dome for one thing. Well, if it's glass, yes, they could make something, I suppose, way that big. But if it's diamond, well, it looked like a diamond, okay? The way the moon was reflecting off of it, it really had that diamond look. It had that, that rainbowish kind of look. And and uh, that, you know, who knows to say that that maybe is not other type of thing that looked like a diamond or, or, or something or whatever. But But ultimately... You know, I've said it before is that we don't we don't we don't know we we don't ever get to go to tours like we get to go to Boeing, uh, we get to go to train hubs, you know, in Illinois and stuff where they build the trains and get to see all those type of things. Uh, we don't get to go and see where they're building the military submarines and and and, <laughs> and, right. and we don't get to see that. So obviously we don't have really that that capability to know what exactly is going on what they're using, what is exactly, you know, because of course, but all I can say is that they, it, that's record books in two ways, record books for the biggest glass sphere uh, and, 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 and record books for the biggest craft for sure. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. The, give us the size of the dimensions again. Like we'll, I can only give dimensions on the craft as far as just as uh, the frontal view, because from I, so you're you're saying it wasn't round in a sense. So you're saying it was like elongated, it, like a cigar shape or something. That I, well, it looked to be round because I can only on the disc. I only could got the the view of just looking out from the trees and seeing it behind the trees, and then and then it moving. Uh, I so I really couldn't get a thing where it would lift up and then go over me to where I could see it if it was in a complete roundness or maybe it had a triangular shape to it that i don't, don't know all i can all i know is it, it, it seemed very round uh the corners of it did when it go when it when it goes on the when it went by the one corners and it didn't look to be any triangular at all just but i would not have known like i say maybe it was but all i can say is it had the huge glass dome on top and uh, so anyway, and I, I want to get back to that later on about the glass dome. But anyway, to jump back a little bit into the story. So we uh, went, and, uh, my, me, so, so here this thing goes and, and takes off, I say it floated back and forth three times. And then on the third time, it went east toward Macaulay Mountain. You know, and I'm in Oregon. So, you know, and I'm in the, my, my little neighborhood. So here I go and I find myself running back. To try to well, I get a better view of it, thinking, well, maybe it's I, I can go over and think I can get a better view up from my driveway or whatever. Well, that is when when I started to run back, right? I noticed above where I seen the 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 thing in space, but up in I mean in in the in the in the field, but up in space was another like what looked like a star. And it, but it was moving really. I mean, Wait, uh, above it. So you're talking about a whole separate craft? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, it had to be a separate craft, and it was above it, and and uh, just probably directly above the the disc um, in the field. Um, and I didn't I didn't notice that until that moved the disc moved. For all I know, I mean, you know, light speed. So <laughs> for all I know, it could have been the same craft. And uh, but uh, all I know is that it was instantly then. I seen um, a a it looked like a star. That's all it did. It just looked like a star it, up up in the up in the sky. And um, it well, if I put my finger on it, I probably um, was uh, 
oh, I, I don't know. I, 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 it's going fast. Like if I threw, if I threw a, 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 a ball, you know, it's how fast it would be moving in space. Wait, if any, were there any witnesses to this? Anything else? Um, what's that? Did anybody else come out to, to see this? Uh, no, not on the first one. And, um, we, um, we, uh, which I was just alone on that one. It was just me. And so, okay. did you think that you may have had any missing time? Because if you've had repeat encounters, then that's obviously a very big trait of people who have been abductees or contactees. Do you think that's possible? I don't have any time in my head where I, because I had the iPod with me on the first encounter. And I remember the time when I went, and it's funny, this is when I went, I looked at the, 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 the the um, clock on the oven when I went out and then mm -hmm. it was on the oven and, and when I went out the back and then I had my pod in my pocket when I was out there watering. So when I went out there to go and start to do my thing, it clicked on and always when it turns on, it has the time right there. So I knew, remember exactly what time it was. And when my, my wife got back, uh, I mean, she just was back just like, I don't know, she made it back probably like at nine, 40 something so 950 so it was i mean everything i i've really been trying to calculate that to see if i had any missing time and nothing is matching up but you know hey who would ever know you know maybe they got my whole maybe they maybe they got my whole memory wrong and they're they're shift my whole time thinking on my whole memory to all you know i'm off an hour i don't know that's that's all i can recount in my head and so there's nothing so now you you referenced you're not your first encounter, so obviously you're, you've had more encounters, right? Yeah, yeah. So that was your first, was my three, first. almost four years ago. Take us to the next one. Okay. And what? And and, and give that us that one. The actually, second. isn't done. Okay. So, okay. Keep going then. Yeah. Keep so uh, anyway, so here it is. So I go running back, and I see this thing up in the space. I, whoa! As I see, and that is. So then that's when I start running back to my to my um to my driveway. And as I ran back to my driveway and I'm trying to, oh, I got to get this thing on videotape. Yeah, I got to get on iPod, you know, and I'm searching around, still trying to figure monkey with this thing, figuring it out. Then I go and I lost sight of it. And I'm sitting, and then I'm trying to look around for it again. I, and, I'll say, and then and my dog was in the house and he barked. I could hear him make a bark. And, and, and he, he was indoors. And then I just looked over my right hand uh, shoulder and um, there was a, a smaller craft that went over the neighborhood, I would say, oh, probably about 150 feet up, maybe. And I, by judging on those lights there, it was probably, just by my judgment, by 15, by 15 feet, I guess. And as it went over the neighborhood, all the dogs barked, bark, 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 bark. And then they um, all... It's actually very common. I've yeah. actually heard that. yeah. And then uh, they um, all barked, uh, went over to the other corner over there, uh, to the other neighbors, and then um, on the other side of the, uh, of the neighborhood. They weren't there at the time. I knew him, and he had some dogs that were out there in his, in his backyard, and they were bark, 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 barking. And then it stayed there for a second, and then it was gone. And uh, like I said, I was the only one there at the time. And the crazy thing of it is, is, is nobody in the town was there. No, no cars to go and driving by. I mean, this is summertime. It's still early enough. We still always got, I mean, and always normally at any other time, it's happening. There's people. That, that's why I actually ask if something's happened to you in that sense, right. because literally if the whole town is shut off, yeah. that is so common that people report for instance, that at, that they're the ones that take in, that the whole people, everyone else is shut off. One of the abductees, if everyone who's listening or watching this it sees, is the Ricky G abduction, where he talks about his case where uh, he, normally people would be out walking their dog or, or driving at four, 5 o'clock in the morning, but it was dead. I mean, it was as if the, the world was shut off. No cars driving, uh, nobody walking. Is that the thing you experienced, Chris? Yeah. Yeah, it is. It is. So so okay. So what keep going. What what's what's So what? anyway, so I so I I um 
here it is, 11 days. I've been, you know, or, or on following days, actually. Probably the next day, I think it was, uh, I, I was just so blown away of all what happened. I believe I tried to call the, uh, uh, and the local newspaper, maybe, and um, didn't really know where to go. And then I walked the neighborhood, and I, uh, I first contacted my buddy over there on, on, uh, on the other side that, uh, that went over on the crap, went over above their, uh, their house, and the dogs were, his dogs were barking. And they weren't there that night. He had a band, and still has a band. But anyway, uh, they were doing practice that night, so they weren't there. And I and, uh, went over there, and t- I actually messaged her on Facebook. And I've known this guy for like 30-some years, so I felt comfortable going over there and talking to him. Uh, you know, it was still a little weird, but, but nevertheless, I, I did. And, and, um, yeah, he, I first messaged, messaged him on Facebook and told him. And so they went over there and we talked and it it went good. And then I, and then other neighbors that I knew and I, um, talked to them and, and they took me in. And then there was just one lady when I was just walking around, I didn't know. And uh-huh. I can't even remember how I even asked her, or brought it up, but I did, and I didn't really get into too much detail. And and um, she said, um, "No, huh? I, I, but I've heard, you know, and kind of start kind of getting me in her own little things, but not really too much." And but she didn't say anything, and so I was like, "Huh?" Oh. So here it is. I go and I go back home, and it might have been the next day or, or later on that day, or I don't know when it was, but it was shortly after. My, uh, the neighbor came over and she was my age 39 at the time and and her and i were uh talking and i was telling her oh, you're gonna believe what happened and she's like oh wow you know and she, she, she's taking me in so she goes when she went home and she told her daughter and uh she told, told her right when she went in the, the door i was you know <laughs> and within uh just not even five minutes later uh her daughter and her come over she's in a panic she's like i she's shaking she says my friends were at Macaulay Mountain camping that night, and they seen the same disc, too. They said they washed it for like 45 minutes. Well, actually, she didn't have detail at that point in time. She just said they seen the same disc that night, and and I was, it made me feel good because at that point in time, I was still going around because these, nobody else seen it. I was still wondering if I was crazy, right? Crazy. Yeah. yeah, so so anyway, um, that made me feel good. So then I go and, and you know, here it is for 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 the 11 nights i'd been out there every single night i'd be going to bed praying for the thing to come back i uh wanting it you know i'm gonna get the best picture i want a detail i want to change the world this is it guys this is it i want to change the world i want to change the ufo industry and i want to do it. oh this is what i was thinking i don't know why so anyway and um here it is out there we were the 26th of of august and we were up late watching movies and my wife had a friend up and the kids it was uh summertime so the kids you know it was you know friday night and the kids i i let the kids stay up late in the summertime you know i they always end up falling asleep past midnight or something anyway but i drug my boy out there to go uh you know help me sky watch kind of every night i'd been out there watering and and then um so when the movies got over that night it was almost midnight it was a friday you know, it was mm-hmm. 26. So it was technically, you know, almost a 20. Well, it was a 27th, pretty much. So my boy and I went out there. And we watered for oh, probably, I don't know, five, ten minutes. And he was wanting to go in because his legs hurt. He had his uh, uh, groin pains. That's what it was. And I'd had this camera. Every night I'd been out there, I had a camera just running on my wrist. Uh, of have the video running just with, you know, ready boom ready to go so here, oh yeah so 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 here i am sitting there and he's like well he's standing up at the pit curb and i don't want to go in and i, I was like well okay so i kind of you know got uh, you know finished up quick and and um went and said all right so I went and walked up to the curb and and stopped and i said well i said turn off my camera and and put it in my pocket i said well don't look like we're going to see anything tonight and uh he said yep and so both of us just turned around and took one step as we both of our backs were turned and then that's when a bright uh well it wasn't real bright i guess but but a a, a flash behind us um and then the 
with a with a pop. It sounded like if he took a light bulb and he threw a light bulb on the ground. And it wasn't real loud, but I don't know. I guess kind of. And uh, we just turned around where Cookie thought maybe a transformer went out, or you know they had a um, uh, you know a firework or something, or you know we just thought this you know just coincidentally it just happened go on at the same time. It's you know I'm all out here trying to to, to have, want this to go and 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 happen, you know, and it come back and all this. Uh huh. Excuse me. Uh, anyway, but no, it came into shape with um, I just I don't know. I guess it just kind of just came into shape. Is uh, also I can say it was a bubble. Like if you took it, just like a soap bubble, and you blew a soap bubble, and then it was. But it was. But it was like um, that part was probably like five feet by five, five feet in diameter. And that had fire white on 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 the outside of it, and it that was spinning backwards while it was going forward, and it was going over the part of the road where they tore up and they put new fiber optic cable in. Um, I think the, the it was the summer before that, and then um, anyway, inside of the bubble was. All this golden dust. I mean, it, it looked like a static. Wait, well, golden dust? Golden dust. Golden dust. It looked like a static. Uh, it looked like a. Uh, it looked like a static TV. It looked like you were like looking in the Milky Way, but it was all floating around inside of it. All this, really? all these different ways. It was all floating around of it. Um, the sphere. This clear sphere, I would say. Um, I, I, just now, how how big was this sphere? Yeah, t- mm-hmm. tell us. I'd say about it's about size of a beach ball. And, and so you seen gold static like in every direction, every or was direction, it just uniform? floating, just floating around? Just it wasn't free, like free, just horizontal wasn't or just going vertical. horizontal. Wasn't all going in one direction. Wasn't all going in just a circular one pattern. It was all going in in a uh, all different directions, just floating abundantly in there, just as if it was own free will, just, just floating in there, just all around this, this, and this sphere, like I say, and if I had to put the sphere, it would look like a diamond to me. Uh, if I had to put that size, it would be a beach ball, maybe a little bit smaller than a beach ball, maybe about the size of a basketball, a little bit bigger. Um, and uh, they had a red glow in the middle of it. And, before we first we I mean we looked at it like like thinking it was like a stone within a, it, within a stone but it wasn't until it got um it was only six feet away from us so I could have touched it really we could see perfectly inside of it we could see six, perfectly six inside feet? of it six feet and, and and six feet away from you literally that it was yeah. so what did you think to maybe go up to it or or anything like uh, that? No, I was, was so captivated. I was just so captivated. This thing sitting right like, by almost me, almost like a deer, like right, just focused, just your I just spread focused. on it. Right? I knew what that UFO was right away. There's the you know the days before to get out my. I mean, not right away. Let me ask you this: since, Do you anyway. feel anything like like heat. any anything in your? No. no, no, not heat. I'm talking about any any messages, any emotions, any anything come to you Nothing. when you're looking at this? No, but time slowed down. Time slowed. In, time slowed in what down. sense? Yeah, time slowed down because I just was like such like I mean it seemed like it lasted forever, kind of in the saying, and not forever. It just was like. You know, I know it only lasted in my thing probably about, uh, I'd say, you know, the whole thing probably, um, you know, eight seconds maybe, seven to eight seconds. But, 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 but it really seemed a lot longer than that in the sense where you're kind of just, uh, yeah. So, but um, it's, it's, it, uh, yeah, it was only six feet away from us anyway, but it wasn't till we went and it was that. It was spinning, why? And it was making a chopping noise as it was, like I say, going spinning backwards while it was going forward. And you could see on the bottom of the, of the bubble, um, it was like sucking the power from from within or arcing off of the off of the road. And um, you could you could see it was uh, it was it was pulling electrical charge from from the wires from underneath the road from the fiber optic cable. And then it went over um, about 
spun away from us about uh, 12 feet away. And then that's where we could see that the, that the red glow in the middle was in a red teardrop. It was a red teardrop shape, some type of glowing red liquid. And um, went, went on 12 feet from us. And then it sat there and it spun for, oh, I don't know, I guess a couple, four more seconds. Like here, hello, get a picture. But gosh, we're just in such a yeah, exactly. you know? And, yeah. and, and, and we're just nothing in our head about picture at that point in time. We're just like, just so captivated. And, um, then it spun over the iron plate manhole cover and then it, and then it arced and it was just gone. It made the uh, same popping noise that it did when it, when it, when it showed up. Uh, and then some sparks rolled around on the, um, on the iron plate manhole cover. And then there's a, a power line that was right above there. And then it, it uh, had some some sparks that went off of the I remember off of the transformer off of the power line that were right directly above the iron plate manhole cover and, and then it was just like I say it was just gone and and right at that time my wife's friend uh, comes out and we thought oh well, she's seen it too well pff, she was just getting ready to leave and oh man we were just so captivated I can't I can't remember what I said to her and. Um, you know, so she got in their car and took off. While she was getting in her car and taking off, uh, the neighbor girl comes home right at the same time. She's passing her. Is this the, the same, same neighbor? This that... is the neighbor girl that had her friend see it up at, up at the mountain. And so I'm like, oh, my gosh, you aren't going to believe it. And I'm just, you're going to just happen again. And her and I are talking. And Colton, uh, my boy's still out there with me. And uh, so here and I, her and I were talking, and that's when I had asked her. I said, "Well, did you hear any more from your friends?" And she said, "Well, yeah, actually, I did." And then that's when she told me that 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 they had watched it for forty-five minutes, and that they had um, went and uh, uh, tried to get video, but she couldn't get uh, they couldn't get video of it. For some reason they couldn't get the camera wouldn't work, and then um, they just got scared and went home. And um, like uh, she said, yeah, they watched it for 45 minutes. And so uh, who knows, maybe they were abducted. But anyway, but uh, yeah, they were younger kids. And anyway, so I was like, oh, wow. So as her and I were sitting there and talking, this streak goes front of her and I. And I mean, from maybe to the normal person, you might have thought it was it was uh, it was a a a, a uh, um meteor or something like that go by but but uh uh no it, it was a clearly a chunk of a disc and her and i just went whoa and mm -hmm. um and my boy and and but the whole entire time while her and i was talking and she was filling me in telling me about all what you know was going on there were two discs above the house the neighbor's house on the other side the neighbors that i went up to go run on knock on their door and and stopped and uh <laughs> those were the ones on the other side and uh, there were two discs above their house. One was 40 feet up. It was going uh, fairly slow, my, my boy said. And then there was one right above it. And then he could see a little – it was going faster, and it had a little streak left behind it. And um, But the one that was going above the neighbor's house 40 feet up, he could see up inside of it really well. And they also had the little glass dome that was um, – on them too, just just basically, it sounded like a miniature version, or looked like a miniature version of what what I had seen eleven days before with the huge um, disc in in the field. With this, so it was only eleven days apart, and now now this is all again in twenty eleven, right? Yeah. yeah. Now, yeah. how many encounters have you had total? Just those two. Mm -hmm. Now, what did were you a skeptic prior to that? Um. <laughs> Or were you open-minded? Always open-minded. Uh, watched a little bit of UFO shows, but, you know, I guess I didn't know if I was any different than the rest of really kind of people who watched shows, but, but I got burned out on them. They're always all the same thing, same story. So so I didn't watch a lot of them. And, and, but, um, After this happened, you became sure. you really interested in stuff. Now, let me ask you this. Do you think that they that they came to you for a peer press or what do you think the whatever was happening or whatever you saw was there for? Because let me, let me say this for everyone out there. What, one very important uh, quote or that I've heard, not quote a, opinion, but I've heard is that every time you see a UFO, it's either going to or coming back from an abduction because apparently they occur every single day 
And if this Roper poll is accurate, one in 40 people have been taken. So do you think it was going to or coming from something? Or do you think it literally was just coming to you? Uh, that that's that's the big mystery right there i'm 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 at this point in time i really just don't know i'm i'm hoping it's going for the other people and not for me <laughs> but well i guess from the from the from the way that uh, from all what it looks like it is maybe it really was coming after me so um i i i don't know you know it's a scary thing for me i'm not it's i'm, I'm scared i'm scared i and in a sense where i hope that uh I hope that I haven't, you know, been abducted and all these horrible maybe things that have happened to me and they blocked out my head. And But uh, <laughs> who knows? Well, we actually are, are We're going to be joined here by Kaiser, who's a really cool listener, oh. exclusive guy, very nice guy. He's got a question for you. Kaiser, welcome uh, to Dr. J Radio Live. I know you got something to ask for Chris. Go ahead. Oh, of course, Dr. J. Thank you for bringing me in. Uh, Hi, Kaiser. I have, hey, how's it going, Chris? Hey, I have heard his story a few times. He is never buried, just like Travis Walt from his original story. Yeah, which I mean, and I can yeah. tell from his emotion that he's obviously, uh, you know, this this wouldn't this stuff. He doesn't make this up. He doesn't want publicity. You don't see him selling books or anything like no, that. He's uh, not. You know, I had to drag him to tell this story and say, "You got you got to tell this, and we got to put this out there." Uh, so go ahead and ask your question. My only question is, in all honesty, when he puts this stuff out there. I feel his soul hurt because he he knows stuff in his mind that he's probably re repressing. I'm wondering, has he ever thought about going under, you know, um, some regression therapy to find out the big picture? And, and I'm coming to this very clear. As a former, uh, well, I have a, a long history of things that I do, but uh, I can, it, 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 it's like an old movie. I can smell a lie like a part in a car, and Chris <laughs> Brown has never shown that. And I just want to know, I think there may be more to it, and he may be regressing it. Has he ever thought about getting into thinking deeper? Into yeah, Chris, that? what about, have you thought about that? Have you thought about maybe meeting someone like Yvonne Smith or who can regress you and maybe see if something happened that's in your subconscious that's not in your conscious memory? Well, that's, yeah, that has been something that's been checked out. I, 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 I don't know if I believe in it, but, but I have checked it out because I've, um, you know, I mean, I guess that's if it's something that that can help. But um, I just, you know, it's all in money, really, and 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 where people are at, and and, and um, yeah. But I have thought about that. I'm, I it really the biggest thing of it is, guys, is like, just as I kind of said earlier, I'd be like, it's been such a stressful thing for me now that I feel like if I found out any more. Well, I was asking, uh, do you think it's possible that you were possibly taken or yeah. anything like that? Like, what are your speculations just, of what may have happened? And then the second part of the question is your theories in general. What do you think, you know, was this a, 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 okay, yeah. a, a machine uh, with beings in it or just one of their robotic things? Yeah. I mean, or maybe I just, a certain thing. My speculation is, uh, my, my, my thing is, I don't think that I was. And I think that this whole thing was, was in the sense of, of the orb came down was like a probe it was like it was a probe that that that, that, that came it was was coming down and and looking and looking stuff. and ultimately giving me a message because you know when that thing came it was I, I can't say how much it was showing us in the middle of this whole entire thing because only the power was coming from and all from under Neath it, just on that bottom area, all above that area was just clear, as clear as I'm looking at my high definition TV, as clear as we could see in that, and my wow. boy too. And so, um, now how, how old was your boy? He was nine and a half at the time. Wow. And so, um, uh, I didn't know about Bob Lazar. I didn't know Bob Lazar's name. I, I knew the story. I, I knew the the face. I guess maybe just because it'd been you know kind everywhere. Of, sure. Yeah. 
but I just didn't know the details on all what, what he had talked about. And then, um, we, um, uh, but uh, like I say, you know, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was like it was going there, and it was, it was showing this, this, this technology in the sense where, I mean, after we seen it, I just got a real easy sense of how this technology worked, and um, you know, um, after after it was, it was the next day, uh, you know, because that come after went and make a you know after they went by and and the thing went shooting away and we ran inside the house and of course the next day uh i was back not knowing where to go who do i go where do i talk to uh you know not thinking nothing in what was in my head right there anything to do with science nothing to do with oh my god what do i i mean oh my god what do i witness but it wasn't in the sense of i just wasn't gasping the whole big picture the big huge picture I was just grasping, oh, wow, this is what happened to me. So finally I went and because it was, I was uh, part of Bond Live and Justin TV, I, was, I always go on and, and they had a little chat thing there. And I, and I popped into a buddy of mine after the encounter minutes later, he was on late at night and it was, he was cross country. So it was in the morning for him. And I jumped in, I just chimed into him exactly what happened. He's like, oh, wow. So anyway, Nevertheless, uh, actually, it was him that told me because I didn't know where to go, and it was him I think that told me about the MUFON. So it was um, it was on the weekend when that had happened. So I think it was um, Monday or Tuesday. No, no Monday. I think is when I called MUFON, and then um, MUFON came over um, the following morning. And I remember on the phone, you know, when I was sitting there talking to him and, and uh, he just was, you know, like taking me in as no, much as he could. Uh, but when I – Let, let me ask sure. you something. I'm actually I, – I received a picture from Danny here. Yeah. Is this what your boy saw? What you're – Yeah. Exactly yeah it's, that, uh, those, are, those, are, those are his drawings. Yeah. Some of them. Let's see. I'm going to go scroll up here. But yeah, those are, uh, those are a couple of his drawings, the ones that he made and – Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the and, and he one. actually made a description. This was of a of an orb uh -huh. that me and my dad mm -hmm. saw, and it was pulling from the power line. Wow! Uh, do you mind if we use this picture for this interview? Sure. Yeah. And I would absolutely be honored. <laughs> and, and, thing with him, where he does never really like to talk about it, and but now he almost kind of talks into his senses. Is he's bothered by it because I'm going on about it maybe too much, and now it's bothering him, or now we're here. He's still part of it, but yet he's like, "Oh, here comes Dad. He's got to go on it again," you know. But then I have to quickly remind him, "Well, you know, uh, you're part of it too." And then he, "Yeah, yeah, I know." And uh, but um, well, yeah, he will. Uh, you know, he just uh, look. I was gonna say, well, Kaiser has a question. If you're wondering, I was going for it real quick. Go, go ahead, Kaiser. Oh, okay. Problem. No problem. Hey, uh, Chris. Yeah. Your 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 words have never varied from anything. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Um. There's a saying in court that the most least reliable uh, witness is the eyewitness. Okay. Your eyewitness testimony has never faltered. Mm -hmm. You would be very reliable. And I have to tell you, much respect to you. Um, there is something that uh, I think Dr. J and everybody else are hearing tonight that uh, they can go look all the history up. You've been very open and upfront. Mm -hmm. All the history, yeah. And, I yeah. appreciate everything you've said too, Kaiser. And, I appreciate well, it all. It means a lot to me. Well, yes. It, it, it's just the truth. So well, that, that's why I appreciate this, Chris, and I think everybody out there is, is going to appreciate and see this on your son. I we have to wrap this up, so I want to ask you, Chris, is there anything else we're leaving out of this encounter before we put this out there for everyone to, to hear and see this picture? I think this is really cool because when a child draws something, if everyone sees this, has actually seen the other interview I did where a nine-year-old kid not only saw something, I left with his grandmother to do something, came back, and he actually drew the encounter. And I think this is fantastic because this is actually very similar to that. Is there anything you want to add to this before 
this closes out for everyone on YouTube to uh, get your story? Um, well, as far as the story itself, uh, there was a little bit more, uh, you know, kind of as far as after the, the, the sighting, um, that was after all of the UFO sightings. But after that, I had had issues with, 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 with things that had uh, with, with my phone um, and then with the, um, with the uh, black suburban that um, came by my... Uh, wait, 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 talk about that for a minute. Wait yeah. A minute. That's a, Black Suburban? Yeah, and the, and the phone calls. What happened was, is, okay, what happened in the following days after the encounter, right? The next day. Boom, I'm, what am I doing? I'm on the phone with everybody, of course, telling everybody about the encounter. Oh, I'm getting okay, of course. It's already on the phone anyway for the previous days, telling everybody about the first encounter, right? That all goes okay. Okay, now I get into the second counter. Going on about the second counter. Oh, that's all going fine. Everybody can hear. Then, uh... When I got up to the orb, I'm talking about the orb, and yeah, and then all of a sudden, and then all of a sudden, shh, 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 and then it just would go dead, and that went on for, um, I'd say the first few weeks, and then. I was well, because I had been out there doing my watering and stuff like that, taking care of my yard still. Of course, I was making sure I was doing there after the counters all during the day then, right? But uh, I was out there during the daytime. And um, the neighbor, uh, uh, not the one that had the on the one side of me, but two houses over, worked up at the, uh, at the uh, Chevy dealership just right behind me on, in that part of the field over there. And he's always coming home every now and then with, with new sh- – Chevys or whatever he was working on maybe at that time. And so here I come, I see this brand new Suburban, black Suburban coming down the road, just normal. But mm-hmm. the windows are all tinted out and there's no plates. And I'm seeing, I just thought, oh, okay, no well, plates they, on, I, on the front or the back. I didn't see any, huh? And I just okay. thought instantly that, 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 that it was, um, government or well, something. No, no, or no. Like- I thought it was just the neighbor coming home f- at first from the, um, uh, from his lunchtime on his working on a suburban because it was mm. a Chevy dealership. Well, it went by, it was just going normal speed. And then as soon as I was, I was out there watering my yard and as soon as it got right in front of my house, then it just stopped almost to a dead stop, just creeping slow, really super slow. Goes all the way past just my house to get past my house and my whatever hundred yards or, or not hundred yards, or whatever it is. 25 yards <laughs> anyway and uh to 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 just go past mouth to speed up to go right up up around the corner there right up um whatever the heck the little road was just to do a quick u-turn to come back down real quick and to go to and come back down to go normal speed to go right by my house again really super slow to go really slow and then go speeding up when it got past my house and then so obviously this is something that was paying attention to you mm-hmm and there's there's windows were so uh-huh. dark, windows I uh-huh. thought were so tinted out and so dark, they were too dark for for because you know you can only have them you know in the seventies when this stuff first came out, uh, you 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 could you could get these things as black as you wanted, but now they put restrictions on it, and they did that they lifted that in like in the eighties and early nineties or whatever, and so it was not like that anymore. And this was like old school. This was all the way black black. Uh, I didn't make up my 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 emoticon you guys are seeing right there. That I'm really, you know, working hard to get that image out. But I didn't make that up until this just last year. Soon- you know, actually, I got to say that I've heard the story before, but I've never heard the men in black portion. I think that's really, really mm-hmm. interesting yeah. to say. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and the fact that you were investigated by MUFON and Open Minds. Yeah. And, and, uh, well, uh, like I say, Open Minds, it was, I reached out to him beforehand before I, he'd even made out the emoticon, my little picture I made. And then as soon as I made that, it was probably just a week later, uh, I got the message from them that said, Oh, we're sorry. We didn't get your message. We'd love to do it. And so then boom, he hooked me up. And, uh, when he, uh, when he did that report, was all I is sucked. It took me that long to get my my thing made, but it was all at the perfect timing. And I and I really have felt that it was almost a UFO guided in this sense. Well, with that, Chris, I'm going to ask you if there's any final words 
you'd like to say to everyone no, out there? No, no, with that, let's call it out. Uh, you know, I do have to say, if you, if you look at my image and then you want to go and look at uh, the uh, Ezekiel's uh, ex- image of what Ezekiel described in his in his dream. Yeah, the, you, the, wheel, the wheel within, within the wheel. wheel right? You will see the exact same thing. You're just going to see it in the Bible version uh, and, and in a 2015 version. And uh, basically, they're the same thing. And and if you want to get to the to, to the crop circles, uh, it's these 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 orbs are crop circles with the. That's what they're saying. Is what they they look like in that sense? Uh, yeah, with the spinning of the grass, the bubble of the grass patterns uh, a pattern, and uh-huh. the um, the radiated uh, ground with the with the soil uh, seems to be tweaked. And um, there's so many different things, you know that 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 you know, like Nancy said it said it best. You know, it's one thing is about I guess about my encounters. It's it connects with not this one thing that I've seen, it's many things that I, it, it connects with. So uh, I am like, and I, and I, you know, I'm maybe a little bit arrogant about it, but I am the real deal. And, and, and so when they have people say, oh, whatever, and, and, and well, that, that's them, exactly I why we, I wanted to interview sure. because I know you're, your I'm case. no scientist. Yeah. I've never worked at Area 51, granted, blah, 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 all that. But what I have seen, uh, am I, am me and a nine-year-old boy and Bob Lazar, are we the only two bo- people uh, no. that are talking at this planet that have seen this? I doubt it, but we're, yes. the, we're the only ones talking about it. She is in the MUFON report. She wasn't there when, like I say, when the orb came, but she was there on the second encounter. And also a, my landlord's friend, uh, seen the, seen the orb come in that night too. And well, is there any chance you'd ever con- be able to convince any of them to talk about this? I moved now. Now I moved. Um, the guy that I was just saying, my landlord's friend, who would have been on the MUFON report two days after we talked, and he was ready to be on it, his baby passed away. And, ah, and so I, right. yeah, that completely just, just left awesome. him away and, well, and out of it. So, With that being said, Chris, I got to thank you, honestly, for being so candid. Everybody out there, this is why it's important for you guys to tell your story. Disclosure is in your hands. The truth will set you free. We are not going to get this from mainstream media. If it wasn't for alternative media outlets such as YouTube, such as Dark Matter, Radio, Digital Network, such as anything that is not CNN, Fox News, that's how you get the truth. Chris Brown, thank you so yeah. much. Find me Dr. at the uh, on my Facebook page yeah, at yeah, the plug, Sublimity plug at my Facebook page at the Sublimity Close Encounter. And um, just go there and 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 uh, hit like and boom. There you go. So- We'll put the link at the sure. bottom of this for everybody to see. Sure. And with that being said, everybody, remember, Dr. J Radio Live, we broadcast Tuesdays and Thursdays. And be sure and watch the website because we have exclusive interviews like this. Uh, Story Musgrave, Astronaut Story Musgrave was an exclusive YouTube interview. Michael Tellinger was an exclusive YouTube interview. David Sarita with Lieutenant Wiegand, another one. And there will be several more to come. So it's very important for you guys to watch the site and watch this channel. And, and as we get more footage and drawings you will also see them just like you'll see chris's here today on this with that being said go to that website and this is remember disclosure is in your head